You are honestly going to love this video because I am so excited for it and it's going to be really informative for you to find out what I think are the best Python data science libraries. I'm going to make a tier list talking about what I think is awesome, what I think is kind of overrated, and what I really, really don't like at all. So please enjoy the video, it's so much fun. I will see you in there. So in here we have many popular data science libraries. I bet you've heard of a lot of them, probably haven't heard of all of them, ranging from data visualization to number crunching, as well as machine learning and deep learning libraries. So many of them are awesome. Some of them I really don't like too much. And so we have the tiers. Essential, which I think is my absolute favorite, like I love these things. I want to use them every day as a data scientist. Often useful, you know, often I run into situations where I would want to use them, although I probably wouldn't load it in every day. Overrated, but kind of useful is like some of these stuff are really popular. I don't think they deserve the popularity that they're given. I have one in mind for sure. And not a fan is straight up like, I do not like this library. I wouldn't recommend spending too much time on it. So I'm definitely going to start off with a fun one, which is essential. Okay, so what do I think is one that is super essential for every data scientist? I bet you know, I'm going to pick, where is it? NumPy, okay? No matter who you are, I really would recommend getting good at NumPy arrays because you can transform all of this data. Pretty much everything in a computer is numbers. Now I'm gonna do an often useful, which I think is, I would say Flask, okay? So I very often run into circumstances where I'd want to use Flask. Obviously you would do it to make a web app, probably not every day. Since we're working down apparently, I'm gonna do an overrated but kinda useful, which is, you might be surprised when I say it, or if you really watched my videos, you'd know my opinion on this is matplotlib, okay? It's a graphing library that most people learn first, and even stuff like pandas is going to actually make matplotlib calls itself. Matplotlib is okay, but there's some other ones here which I'll talk about, like Plotly, or I like so much more, so I just, I really think they're overrated, and you shouldn't spend as much time learning it as people think you should. Something that might not be considered a data science library, but is often used by data scientists, is Selenium, or Selenium, I don't know which way to say it, and I'm putting it as not a fan. I've used it before, for doing some web scraping stuff and it's really just kind of clunky and glitchy and doesn't work very well. So Django, where would I put Django? Not a fan? No, I'm actually, it's not that I'm not a fan. Overrated but kind of useful. I mean, I don't think it's overrated. Is it often useful or is it essential? It's not essential. So I definitely would put it right alongside Flask here. No matter what, you should probably be able to kind of make a web app and understand what's going on here. Flask or Django, honestly, just pick one. Companies use both. Uh, I don't use it quite as much because it's a little more clunky. Okay, so Kira's. Notice that Kira's and TensorFlow are considered separate libraries here, even though we actually nested Kira's and TensorFlow too. I'm going to treat them as separate things because they are kind of different components. Kira's itself, I have got to put at... Definitely not, not a fan if you know me. Definitely not overrated if you know me. Often useful, might think I'm putting it there. I'm actually throwing it in as essential because I really want to promote you should learn deep learning and Kiris makes this ridiculously easy once you kind of know what you're doing. Yes, it is essential in my mind. Now I'm going to think about SciPy. So if you don't know what SciPy is, it's kind of sort of the same thing as NumPy, except it's an extension on NumPy where it's more complicated stuff like stats things, like Fourier transforms. I'm not going to put it as not a fan because it's not that I'm not a fan. Overrated but kind of useful. Honestly, yeah, actually, so I'm going to put it as overrated but kind of useful because it's almost always listed in job descriptions. I've literally never been in a company that's used SciPy itself. I'm not saying it's dead. I'm sure it's used a lot, except it's honestly not that much important. I talked a little bit about Plotly before, and so you know my feelings on that. I got to put that as essential. Quite honestly, I love Plotly. It is so amazing for visualization. And honestly, it's just better in every way. Like it looks better, it's more intuitive, and it's not any more difficult. Okay, so now let's talk about PySpark. Essential, often useful, overrated, or not a fan. Well, I know I'm not putting it as not a fan because I'm definitely a fan. Overrated but kind of useful? No, it's above that. Often useful is a good way to put it. It's not necessarily essential, even though I talk in a lot about videos where I would definitely recommend winning PySpark. I 100% would, except on a day-to-day -day use in your own thing, you know, you'll probably only use PySpark and consider it essential if you're in a company, but if you're by yourself and kind of doing your own thing and working with smaller data sets, I'm going to do a couple of these ones kind of quickly here because I bet they're not quite as interesting and a little bit less known. Pillow is for image processing. I very commonly use it whenever I want to change images. And so I find that it's often useful for me. And OpenCV, I find, is probably 
For me, I'd have to put it as overrated. I'm sure a lot of people use it. For those that are into natural language processing, you probably would have heard of NLTK. And unfortunately for me, I have to put it as not a fan because I don't do natural language processing work day to day, but I'm sure it's an awesome library. I'm just not too familiar. Pkinter here is something you probably never heard of. It's for making GUIs, which stands for graphical user interface. I find it's extremely clunky and not very useful for me, so I'm gonna throw it in as not a fan. For those that know me, you'll know that I don't use Seaborn, so I have to throw it in as not a fan but it's not a data science library that is bad. It is great for visualization, and so I picked Plotly. I love Plotly, so I'm going to put Seaborn as not a fan, but if you like it, that's totally fine. Scrapey or Scrape High, basically it's for the same thing that Selenium is, except better at doing web scraping, and so I'm going to put it as often useful because it's actually great. A lot of data sets you can't just get by, you know, going to Kaggle and anything interesting for a web project or any sort of project. You want to get that data from the web. Scrapey or also Beautiful Soup I don't have here are good to tools to do that. I know you guys really want to know where I put pandas, so I'm leaving that to the end. The machine learning stuff is up now, where scikit-learn is just based machine learning, TensorFlow and PyTorch are for deep learning. For those of you that know me, you'll know I don't really use PyTorch, but I kind of know what's going on there, and so I'm going to put it, for me, as not a fan, but it is a great deep learning library. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't learn it. It just means that I chose to learn TensorFlow and Keras. More so the popular thing to do is TensorFlow and Keras. There's just more code out there and it's a little more friendly. I'm gonna stick with those. Now, where do I put TensorFlow itself? So this is basically pretending that Keras isn't a part of TensorFlow, even though it is. I have to put it as often useful. And that's, I can't put it as essential because it's too confusing for me to constantly use in and out. You know, maybe one day I'll get amazing at it, but it's a very complicated library. And without Kira's, I, I can only put it as kind of useful. Okay, scikit-learn is honestly phenomenal, no matter what I put it as here. It is machine learning. It does clustering, k-means, and db scan. It has dimensionality reduction like PCA that, you know, we'd use all the time. And we also have random forests, linear models, and logistic regression. It's just fantastic. So obviously, you know, I'm not going to put it as not a fan. I'm not going to put it as overrated. In fact, I'd put it as underrated if I could. And often useful or essential is obviously where I would put it. Now, I have to throw it in as essential. Just like those train test split, those functions and the linear models, that it just comes up so often that scikit-learn is the easiest way to do this and it's all vectorized and awesome. The only problem with it is it doesn't use GPU. Maybe you want it to, it's a little slow sometimes, but it's a really, really good set of algorithms and tools. Now I need to deal with the elephant. Actually, that's Hadoop. The panda or the pandas in the room, pandas is absolutely phenomenal, okay? Just working with data in a way that humans can actually understand and mess around with it and do stuff like joins is really really phenomenal and so pandas i obviously would not put as not a fan i do sort of think it's a little bit overrated because it's not as easy to use as most people think it is it's actually kind of tricky to work with but it's not overrated in general it's properly rated because it's very good and not that difficult once you get over the initial hump now Often useful or essential is where it's going to go, and I honestly don't know which one because it's really, really useful and I use it all the time, but is it really worth the essential? 100% it is. Please stick around for this part even though I'm done. Let me explain to you my top five. I have the full stack here of anything I would want to do. I have, if I was to put this in order of working with a data set, I would go with pandas first. I load it in with a CSV. I might use PySpark if I'm working with bigger data, but probably pandas is fine. And then do just simple visualizations in pandas and messing around summarizing the data to understand what's going on. Probably use something like Plotly to understand more about what's going on and get better insights about the data. But then to actually do the complex analysis, we're gonna start to convert it to NumPy to mess around with it and convert it to formats like Kira's or Scikit learn. These two, fairly interchangeable, although I'd probably put scikit-learn first, mess around with machine learning algorithms like simple linear runs, and then we would switch to deep learning algorithms, and NumPy feeds into all of this. So here's the right order of pandas to plotly to NumPy, to Scikit-Learn, and Keras. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop a like, and if you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Please subscribe.